Hello and welcome to Hungry and Skint, the show aimed at bringing cooking to the student masses. Coming up on tonight's show we have... And welcome to our first two guests, Matt and Ted. Hello. You all right? How you doing, guys? Not too brutal. Could be better. How you well, what's up? A few too many last night. Went down cocos. Good. Uh, well, luckily, luckily for Matt and Ted, we've been doing a bit of research into hangover cures. Ryan's been out and about to find out what's the best way to sort out the thumping in your head. Oh, I've got such a hangover. We asked the general public on their views for a hangover cures. Here they are. The best hangover cure is a fryer. Can of Coke and uh, chocolate fingers. Good bacon sandwich. Uh, maybe a bit of water. Salads or just like party home food. Really nice and it makes your head clear. Not gonna lie, that yeah, gets me going. Drink lots of apple juice, macaroni cheese. If it's a good weekend and I've still got money, um, I go for a fry up with my friend because the grease and all the food and the protein kind of mixes in with the alcohol and soaks it up. A bacon butty and a big glass of orange juice. Hot chocolate, bed, and all the Disney movies. Monster Munch. Monster Munch, yeah. Yeah, I like Monster Munch. Uh, crisps and sleep. Sushi. Um, really different Chips. <laughs> McDonald's. Soup. 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 It's probably like bacon lasagna. That sounds really weird. Spaghetti bolognese, 100%. <laughs> Calamari. A home cooked roast on a Sunday. Strawberry by Vina. <laughs> Luke's aid and bad. Chicken and chips. Rice. McDonald's and Veronica. Chinese. Anything Italian. Lemonade. Orange juice. Lots of it. Keep drinking. <laughs> good night's rest and a glass of water in the morning with okay. full English. Pasta. Oh, that's a good one. And uh, then quick trip to McDonald's. I have one of their bagels. <laughs> Lasagna. Curry. Pizza. I might just eat pretty much the whole contents of my fridge and drink lots of milk. Sleep. <laughs> and a good hug. <laughs> Okay, right, so we've collected the most popular cures here. Um, our guests are going to try them for me. So, if you could try the cinnamon for me. Yep. Um, and for you, it's a, a nice, safe, hearty sandwich. Good. How's the sandwich, all right? Mm, that's good. I can feel it helping already. Uh, already? Mm. See, there we go. Yeah. And, and the cinnamon? Yeah, all right. <laughs> Enjoy that sandwich even more. Watch this and Be right for now, but you're gonna need a decent meal at some point today. What would you normally cook? I cook, I normally just stick in a pizza. It's way too expensive to cook. No, cooking doesn't have to be expensive, which is exactly what we're gonna find out now from the Exeter College Cooking Academy. So I'm here with the expert on student cooking, Stuart Fowles, surrounded by the student chefs of the Exeter College Hospitality and Catering Department and amongst them may be the next Jamie Oliver. So what is cooked when it's dinner time at Top Student Chef's house? So I'm here with Mikey and Connor, two skilled level two students at the college. So Connor, what do you cook when you're at home? Uh, obviously being a chef, that takes up a lot of my time, so anything when I get home that's quick, easy, and cheap to prepare, it's good for me. But um, when I get a bit more time, I like to bake a little bread. 
I like to cook all sorts of stuff, from prepping roast to cooking roast to all different types of meat, using duck, chicken. Um, but then obviously being a student, I don't have a lot of money, so at home I go for cooking basic things like lasagna, um, spaghetti bolognese, and those sorts of cheap, easy dishes. So today we have provided two bags of nutritionally balanced food on a student budget. And you guys are going to cook what you would usually cook at home out of these ingredients. Do you want to take a look? Yeah. So Stuart, what would you like to see from these ingredients? Okay, well I'm looking for flair, um, using the, the products correctly. Um, I'd like to see um, that makes something a bit special, something that's a little bit creative, you know, from the from the main course and dessert. I'm looking for sort of good portion control, good use of um, ingredients. Brilliant. Do you think you can manage that, guys? Yeah. Let's see why not. <laughs> So both students have been given 30 minutes to create their healthy, nutritious food on a student budget, which will then be judged by the head chef. So Connor, what are you cooking? Uh, I'm just going to do a nice little uh, beef stroganoff, quite uh, spicy, nice food. It's quite uh, easy to do for a big family as well, so yeah. it's quite cheap. So. Brilliant. Have you ever uh, cooked this before? Uh, I've seen it done, but it's a basic sort of thing. Well, I'm going to bake some white chocolate and raspberry muffins. Thank you. Do you say you're quite a baker? Um, I do like to bake bread, like Connor said, when I'm it, but I don't get much time to do it because it's quite time consuming, but no, nothing wrong with a cheeky muffin every now and again. Lovely. Can I try it? Is it safe? Yeah. yeah. Could use some ingredients. Nice mustardy flavour coming through. Nice mushrooms. Quite large for a portion, chef, but really good. Yeah, excellent. Well done. Thank you. Okay, Chef, what have we got here then? Uh, we've got some raspberry and white chocolate muffins. Okay, lovely. Smell great. Beautiful, Chef. So we've learned that it is possible to cook good food on a student budget. Back to the studio. Now joined by nutritionist, writer and chef Kevin Smith. Hi Kevin. Hi Ollie. He's here to tell us about his new book. Um, Kevin, why do you eat healthily? Uh, I eat healthily because um, a number of years ago I, did, I, was, I got rather ill and um, I think that was due to the fact that I didn't understand the relationship between food and feeling well. So when I understood that um, one of the ways to recover was to actually start thinking about the food that I was allowing into my system, sure. then uh, that changed everything. Yeah, and I think that's probably a thought process a lot of our viewers ignore. Um, yeah. What's a balanced diet? I mean, that's the, the, the sort of the term that's thrown around a lot. Mm. What would you, in your words, what's a balanced diet? Balanced diet, um, you've got to go back to kind of basics. Um, with any diet, the closer you get to the food in terms of where it's grown or how it's produced, and, and, and then the cooking process, the better the food will be for you. So avoid anything that's processed, any kind of processed food. You can't avoid everything, but you know, to, to get closer and closer to the uh, actual moment where the food's grown is the best thing. So the, actually the best thing would be uh, get an allotment or in your garden, grow stuff, take it out of the garden, and as soon as you've picked it, 
cook it. So that's that's the best way. I mean, obviously, yeah. it's not accessible to you know probably quite a lot of our viewers, but that would be the best way, wouldn't it? Yeah, it'd be actually be, be the best way. But um, you know, buying local produce, for example, is far better than buying stuff that's been flown across the world. You know, pre sure. frozen in aircraft and and all that kind of stuff. It's much better to buy local product. It'll be more tr nutritious and it'd be fresher, be better for you yeah. than, um, than the uh, mass produced stuff. Okay, and I mean, the biggest issue that most of our, our viewers will face is that it's the misconception that eating healthily is it's time consuming, it's mm. not always particularly cost effective. Yeah. And that is a very real issue for these guys. Now, would you disagree or, or would you agree? Yeah, with I that? totally disagree with that. I mean, that's one of the key things about my book. In my, in my book, it's got recipes in there, explains how you take these basic ingredients and create your own food. Um, and the process, you know, often you can create a really nice meal in 15 minutes sure. of basic ingredients. It's a complete illusion to think that you have to go through some magic process that takes, you know, hours and hours and hours of preparation. It's not like that. And because you're getting the basic food, because you're buying stuff that's basic food stuffs, it's much, much cheaper. I mean, if you go to a health store and buy, a, a, you know, beans that are, haven't been pre-cooked and put in a, a tin, then they're much better for you and and they're much, much cheaper, about, you know, at least half price. Right. So, you know, if you do that, then you'll save money and you'll feel much, much better. That's great. Well, thank you very much, Kevin. So we've got healthy eating licked, but what other health issues do we need to think about when tackling the kitchen? We've gone out to show you some examples and to explain to you just how to keep safe when you're cooking at home. <laughs> Kitchen can be a dangerous place if you're not careful. Learn these safety precautions and use them. Remove any jewellery and keep it somewhere safe. Wear sensible shoes to avoid slips and trips. Always protect yourself with an apron. Avoid wearing clothing with loose sleeves as these can catch fire or get caught in appliances. Keep cupboards and drawers closed when not using them. Make sure your work surfaces are as clear and clean as possible. Thoroughly wash your hands before cooking and during if you need to. Knives can be dangerous tools. Look after them carefully. Never use blunt knives. Store knives safely and away from children. When chopping food, use a plexiglass or plastic board. These are healthier. Always cut away from you. The knife, let it fall. Do not try to catch it. Keep pan handles turned inwards on the stove to prevent spillages and accidents. Before using any electrical appliance in the kitchen, always read the manual. Check your appliances regularly for faults and have them serviced. For moving or cleaning appliances, always unplug them. Remember, overloaded electrical circuits can cause electrical fires.
So have you ever met someone you really liked? Asked them for their number, got to that second date, but had no idea what to cook. We've come up with a guide to help all young romantics out there to cook the perfect date night dinner. Today, we're going to be looking at freshness of breath. Our biggest out here is our test subject, Wayne. Wayne is going to eat three foods and see which one produces the best results. Let's see how he gets on. So, Pack, don't eat any of the following on a date. Mexican, Indian, Chinese, and it's your garlic, soup, spaghetti, noodles, crabs, sushi, asparagus, beans, fast food, buffet food. Avoid tea foods food. that will drip, splash, smell, make cause loss of Do, however, try to remember some of the following. Avoid restaurants, your best. be courteous and polite. Compliment them and go for the kiss. Respect one another. Be confident. Put thought into the location. Brace what sets you apart. Yeah, but that's all we've got time for now, so uh, back to the studio. <laughs> So that's why I never get a second date. Thanks, guys. So finally, we've got a challenge to show who can cook a tastier dish in the space of a minute. And there's a catch. It's only using what you might find in a student's fridge. I know, yes, it's back to the age-old battle. Who's the best, boys or girls? Hello, and welcome to Exeter College's Cook-Off. Today, we've got two contestants. One for the men. Jimmy Explosion. And for the girls. Anna McDonald. Right, and both of these people have to make a meal in one minute. There is a catch, however. They can only use the items you might find in the cupboard of a student household. Imagine this. You've got an exam the next day. You haven't got time to eat, but you must run downstairs and grab something. These are the sort of things you might find in your cupboard. But how creative are our contestants? Let's put them to the challenge. You have one minute. Ready? Steady, cook! Okay, finish there! Okay, fantastic work from both teams here. We definitely have two meals, one for the boys and one for the girls. Let's have a look at them, see how they taste. I think you'll agree that was a very exciting minute of cooking, but now it's the crunch time, so to speak. Let's do some tasting. First, we'll have a look at Anna's. Okay, fabulous. Good, right. Well, what I really like here is a presentation. A lot of time has been taken into putting this together, but it must taste nice as well as look nice. So let's have a go. Ooh, wow. What a taste sensation. Okay, well, the taste. I suppose if you like uh, Marmite, you might like this. There's a lot of Marmite in there. But I think the real key and the real uh, bonus to this piece is the presentation. Okay. On to our next contestant, the boys. How did Jim do? Double, triple, triple decker sandwich. Right, okay, well, first of all, I like the size. I'm a man of stature, 
And so something this big interests me. It's all in the tasting, though, as they say. So uh, let's give it a go. There was one key problem with your sandwich. Too big. No, I'm not. It's, it's not the size that bothers me. There's too much salad in there. For a student, if you think about it, how many students do you know eat salad on a regular basis? Right, it's decision time. So who do you reckon has won the challenge? Is it the girls with Anna's smiley face dish? Or is it the boys with Jim's mega sandwich? I think I'm going to have to give it to the girls. Yes! Thank you. Thank Absolutely. You. Thank you for a much. wonderfully presented... Calm down, Jim. For a wonderfully presented uh, plate of crisps, tomatoes and marmite. Well done. So there you have it, folks. Another win for the girls. Well done. That makes it 4-1. That's it for this week. So join us next week for another student cook-off. OK, well, that's it for this week. Thanks very much for watching. And tune in next week for another episode of Hungry and Skint.